More often than not, I found that to be the case when it came to rock and roll stars. That was an abrupt change when I started meeting um, sports figures that we had covered in the comic books. I don't think I can think of a single one that was happy with us. We do the biographies. We are factual and we are authentic. But what revolutionary comics is not is authorized. And that's why they're in trouble with the Pittsburgh Penguins over this edition. Well, they say that we are infringing on their copyright and logos. Specifically, Shapiro says the Penguins don't like the drawing of their uniform on the cover, nor the penguin in Lemieux's hand. But this one looks more like the cartoon character Chili Willy than it does the Pittsburgh Penguins penguin. Still, the Penguins are apparently taking revolutionary comics to court to stop them from selling this edition. It's a case they might win. They might win it by default. Uh, if they would have the nerve to come to San Diego and uh, sue us, we'll defend ourselves here. I don't think we can afford to defend ourselves in Pittsburgh. If the small comic company could fight, it could possibly win. And what does the subject of the unauthorized biography have to say about all this? Well, no word from the great Mario Lemieux. He was busy on the ice tonight. But even if he did object, sorry, Mario. Remember the First Amendment? And in fact, I got chased out of a convention one time by Pete Rose. Um, I didn't tell him I was the guy who wrote the comic book, but as I got him to autograph it, uh, someone recognized me, whispered to him that I was the guy, and he literally got up out of his chair, came out from behind the table, and chased me out of that room. Um, and I sold that comic for about $150, as I recall. What we tried to do primarily with sports figures, to the extent that we could, and still remain a true story, was to portray them in a pretty heroic light, because we knew that the people who would buy those kind of books were kids who admired these people as heroes. That is a fairly successful branch. Revolutionary fans were some of the most honest <laughs> and uh, blunt people I've ever run into. Uh, if a book sucked, they would tell us. If we totally got something wrong, they would tell us. Um, and the end, that was cool. That was okay because it made us work harder. The fact that there is such a thing as fans of rock and roll comics amazes me. Uh, I can see being a fan of a rock and roll star, someone who writes the music, performs the music, but we started getting fan letters. I mean, we were telling stories that already existed. I wasn't creating anything. I wasn't creating anything new. I was telling a story in a new way, maybe, with Todd's, uh, under Todd's guidance. But I really think what they were doing was um, associating us with the bands that they respected, and therefore we sort of had a little of that fame rub off on us. I saw that firsthand when we would like hang out with Kiss. We worked with Kiss directly uh, on some comic book projects, and they invite us to things like private parties and things like that, and people would treat us like they treated the band. And in fact, if we were behind the barricades and the audience was out front, and when we'd throw comic books out to the audience, they would rush the stage and cheer as if we were like rock and roll stars. And I realized at that moment, it's like they're confusing our fame with the fame that we're talking about, that we're writing about.